Yes, everybody. Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's match day. Man United against the young boys tonight. But this morning, we are talking about the future. We are talking about long-term planning at Manchester United. Not something that our club is, let's be honest, very good at. Yeah, well, it hasn't been good at for a long time. But maybe things are changing. Maybe Ralph Radnick really is the beginning of something different. The beginning of something different going forward. That Manchester United, as a football club, will start to plan properly. And that's what I'm going to be discussing in this live stream this morning. I'm going to be discussing Eric Ten Hag. I'm going to be discussing Edwin van der Sar. I'm going to be discussing how both of them could be coming in to Manchester United in the future. The dream is on. And I'm going to be speaking about it in this live stream this morning. How are you all doing? Nice to see you. I hope it's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to having this conversation because I'm excited about the idea of it. And it's not just clickbait, ladies and gents, right? I am, <clears throat> I'm here talking about what's coming next. And I really hope, by the way, let me just check this now because I'm a little bit fearful this has happened again. I hope it's not. I'll just check now because for some reason yesterday I went live and it didn't go live on YouTube for no reason whatsoever. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're live. We're on. We're good. Panic over. Panic not. Good morning, every single one of you. Let's start talking about Edwin van der Sar, eh? Let's start talking about Eric Ten Hag. At once upon a time, I thought it was, um, I don't know, I thought it was an absolute pipe dream. But then I thought Ralph Ragnick was a pipe dream. And then Ralph Ragnick happened. Now, why am I getting excited this morning? I'm going to bring you comments from Edwin van der Sar from yesterday. I'm going to bring you comments from Eric Ten Hag from yesterday. And why maybe it's changed a little bit more in the positive sense, compared to where it was before. Let's talk about it. Let's go. As always, fire in your comments. Get involved as much as you want to. Let's talk. I can see plenty of you in the comments. We've got Kieran. Good morning to you. T, good morning to you. Josh, good morning. At least it's working this morning. I have no idea why that wasn't working yesterday. Literally they did the exact same thing today. Didn't change a bean and it did work yesterday. Screw you. Anyway, Paul, good morning. Klein, good morning. Emmanuel, who's watching on Facebook? We've got Matty. Good morning to you. Over there, who else we've got? We've got Abdullah, we've got Edward. Where do you get these rumours? Well, I don't know, mate. It's like I read the news. Uh, good morning to you all, my friend. And I know I know you're going to be happy tonight because a certain Donny van der Beek is starting. If we get Ten Hag, we can get Van, van der Sar, Frankie de Jong, Haidara, Kessi, Haaland and Koulibaly. Everyone will need to hop on Noah's Ark because it will be boring. Woo! It's a good comment there. I like that. Hey, it will be boring. And I would very much like to steer that ship. But let's talk about, yes, look. Yesterday, Ajax, fantastic from them. They really were fantastic in this year's Champions League, weren't they? Six wins out of six for the first time in Ajax's history. Ajax, yeah, they've been impressive as hell in the Champions League this year. I think they've got 20 goals, like five conceded. Ten Hag's done a masterful job there. And if you look here at the stats here, <clears throat> the last time Ajax won the league before Ten Hag joined was in 2013-14. He won the league in 2018-19, got first in 2019-20 and won the league in 2020-21. That's a hell of a little record there. In the meantime, he was also seconds away from reaching a Champions League final and won our first cup finals since 2010. So it's safe to say that Ten Hag has come in and taken Ajax up a level. Ajax has always been, I'm sure it's the same with you, Ajax has always been a club that I've absolutely admired for years and yet Ajax has always stayed true to themselves. I love that, man. Well, first of all, Amsterdam is by far and away one of the best cities in the world. Every time you go to Amsterdam, you come back with different stories. Every time you go to Amsterdam, if you want to sit there, you want to get stoned as hell, you go and do that. If you want to be cultural, you go and do that. Whatever, whatever night you're looking for in Amsterdam, it's possible. Whether it's chilled and relaxed or absolutely full-blown mental, it's the best place for it. Anyway, so I love Amsterdam. I love, I love Three Little Birds. I love Bob Marley. I love the club. Honestly, if I wasn't a United fan, I'd 100% be an Ajax fan. Jar, good morning to you watching from NYC. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you. Um, Manoil, haven't seen you in a while either. Tricky, Ten Hag's tricky reds injected in my veins. Well, maybe I will because, well, I won't actually. But if we're looking at what Ten Hag said yesterday. Now, I followed these closely. I've already done a Ten Hag to United full story. And you're damn right I'm going to be doing more of them. I am going to be... Um, Keeping a real close eye on this because uh, what's what's a little bit different here with Ralph Radnick is 
we've got a manager in who's now in on the short term, right? And we're in a situation where we have a manager in, but there's no disrespect whatsoever in looking at what's coming next because we don't know what's coming next. It's not like we've got Solskjaer in a three-year contract or Jose in on a three-year contract, right? It's um, We've got a six-month interim manager and we need to be discussing these plans going forward from summer onwards. And we don't know what they are just yet. Now, Ten Hag is a clear possibility. If we're looking at the blueprint of what Ragnik is trying to bring into this team, you can see where Ten Hag falls into it. Now, let me get into the juicy part of the news. We got excited here, first five minutes. I always do. What can I say? That's what happens when I talk about Ten Hag. Um, let me just check one thing here. Right, okay, no, nothing in there. Right, let's move on. Ten Hag was speaking yesterday, was asked about his future again, and this is what he had to say. So, so Overmars, if you didn't know, is extending his contract or has extended his contract at Ajax until 2026. What does that mean for you and your plans? Not much. I have one year left after this season. Usually the technical director is there for the long term and the manager is for the short term. The feeling is really good here. Now, something I've noticed, and I'm sure something that you've noticed as well. Well, certainly if you've been listening to me because I bark on about it enough. His tone has kind of changed. I would say in in the last few weeks, and I'll show you what I'll show you what I mean here. This is what Ten Hag said a few days ago. This bit here, I believe when he was asked about a possible next move, I believe I'm ready. I would gladly accept that challenge, but it's not that I'm hunting for it. If this step doesn't arrive, I won't say my career has failed, but I believe I have enough skills to accept the challenge. Now, what my reaction to that was this: it's a huge shift. From Ten Hag. He's always distanced himself from conversations linking him to other jobs. Now, he's been linked over the last couple of years. He's been linked to Spurs. He's been linked to Barcelona. He's been linked with Netherlands job. He's been linked with the Newcastle job. He's been linked with the Manchester United job. Five different jobs. And he has distanced himself from every single one of them, including the United one, whenever he's been asked. I'm not here saying that he's there flirting with United, twerking. He's not. But that's a massive change in what he's saying there. The shift in, in, in his rhetoric, in his tone. I believe I'm ready. I would gladly accept that challenge. Ten Hag, by the sounds of it, is... that 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 That's what my spidey senses are saying, right? That's what my... I'm always saying that's a come and get me quote. I I, I get the same feeling. I, as I said, I'm not saying that Ten Hag's going to be twerking at any point for the United Club. I don't think he will. I, don't think he's, I think he's got far more respect for Ajax than that. But it's like the moons are starting to align sort of thing. Edwin van der Sar was, was also asked about Ten Hag and his future. And now we're going to get into the van der, Sar, van der Sar quotes. By the way, van der Sar is looking like he's had quite a few cookies out in Amsterdam. That's all I'll say. Um, and he was asked, what about Ten Hag, Edwin? His name is mentioned a lot at Manchester United as well. Because that means we are doing something well. It's the same with the players. When we perform, the interest comes. Absolutely. And it, it is a compliment. It's a compliment to how... It's a compliment to how well Ajax have played over the last few years that all of their players, I'd, lo I'd love to sign so many Ajax players. And I'd, well, we sign Van der Beek, but, mm. but he's starting tonight. So we'll get excited about that. We'll speak about their predicted 11 soon. And yeah, it's a compliment to their coaching staff, to their directors, that they are an extremely well-run football club, right? It really is. Um, Mike here, not been on in a while. Good morning to you, Mike. Nice to see you. We've got Charles watching from Melbourne. Good morning to you. Wicked over there. We've got Godswell watching from Ivory Coast. We've got Daniel watching from Nigeria. And there was someone watching from Italy up there. I didn't see who you were, but Harrison, you're watching from Zambia. And that, see, so this is exactly that. The, the, the language has shifted dramatically. That's what I'm trying to say. That, that's what rhetoric means. Rhetoric is, is the language that is spoken. It's, it's whether or not you welcome a sort of, um, welcome a, a rumour or sort of like properly push it away. But I think he's welcoming it now. And I can see a shift here. And this is what I mean. I keep saying the moon's lining. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Moon's lining. But... Let's move on to the tasty quote. This is the quote that got me excited. My reaction to this quote is basically this. <laughs> this is my reaction to the quote I'm about to read you. Just sitting there, just, <laughs> just, just happily smiling when I'm reading this quote. Let me, let me scroll, zoom out now so I'm reading it for you. Right. Let's, let's not get too excited, Sam. This is what Van der Sar said yesterday. He said, Edwin. Your name is always circulating around Manchester United. Are you not tempted? Van der Sar, 
I'm enjoying myself so much at Ajax. I still have two years left here. I want to keep achieving things here with the club, but I am sure that one day the moment will arrive. Edwin van der Sar yesterday for the first time saying, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to work for Manchester United at some point. I'll play your stupid thing. Van der Sar to Manchester United. And we're going to win the treble with him. Not in goal this time, but with him there. On, who cares? Let me turn that off. Look, I'm excited about that. That's, that, that's that's a um it's an important moment there. So it's an important shift. As I said, it's a, it's a shift in the it's, it's a shift in the rhetoric. It's a shift in the rhetoric of what Ten Hag is saying about his future. It's a shift in the rhetoric of what Van der Sar is saying about his future. And ladies and gents, man, look, you can. The timeline is so obvious. Look at it. Hmm. How long has Ralph Ragnick got left? Ah, oh, Ralph Ragnick's on a two-year consultancy, I hear you say. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. My spidey senses are indeed tingling. I tell you what, look, he does look high as a kite. <laughs> He's definitely been enjoying the wear. He obviously hasn't been enjoying the wears. But I'm sure he has at some point, as we all have, right? Come on. Let's be honest. Anyway, look, I, I, I'm, I'm dead excited about the idea of this because it's... it's it, it, <laughs> Manchester United has taught me to be pessimistic as a fan about our long-term future, about our long-term plans, right? But we've got Ralph Randick in on a six-month contract now. I didn't think we'd ever do that. In a million years, I didn't think we'd do that. I didn't think we'd give him a, a two-year consultancy role. We did both of those. I was like, okay, wow. United are actually stepping in the right direction. So this idea of Van Assar and Ten Hag, I, I always thought, in my opinion, like there was no chance of it because why, why are Ajax going to be... Why are Ajax, no, sorry, why are Van der Sar and Ten Hag going to rip that part out of Ajax? But Ten Hag is on a project there at Ajax, which ultimately the only thing that could take that project further is if he wins the Champions League this year. He came so close in 2018 when he got lost to Spurs in the semi final. And he probably realistically probably would have lost to Liverpool in the final anyway because they were a team on fire that year. As much as it hurts me to say it. The only thing that can really take that project forward, yeah, is, is winning the Champions League. And if he's not going to do it this year, you're not going to do it, right? Ten Hag, six out of six in the group stage. Let's see what goes on. I, know, I, I, I hope that either United win it or Ten Hag and Ajax win it. Either of those would be happy with. I only, you know, prefer United. But yeah, that project, for me, it kind of seems like that it, it's, it's reached that crescendo at the end of the season. So it's a right, it will be the right time for Ten Hag to be leaving. Gangshi, nice to see you this morning, my buddy, all the way from Taiwan. Hi, Sam. Ten Hag must have liked what he saw in the Crystal Palace match. King Eric to join Archangel. Ooh. Ralph next season. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah, look, you, you can see some... Um, it's all about continuity. It's, my, it's my, one of my favourite. If, look, if, if Ralph Ragnick's got his three Cs, um, I've got one C at the moment, and that's continuity. I keep this, It's the word, buzzword I keep mentioning. We've got that continuity between Solskjaer and Ragnick, and there'd be huge continuity between Ragnick and Ten Hag. And for a lot of people... There'd be more continuity between Ragnick and Ten Hag than there would be between Ragnick and Pochettino. Uh, which these are videos that I'm going to do across the course of the season. We don't have to have that conversation in December. There's too much football going on. Uh, but I'll be having conversations like that. Maybe we can look at how Ragnick would slide into the Poch era and how Ragnick would slide into the Ten Hag era and which one of those would suit United more. We'll have that conversation a little bit later in the season for sure. Andrew, good morning to you. The future is bright. Sam. Weren't you going to sing a song for us after the win against Arsenal? Was I? When did I? When did I? When did I do that? When did I agree with that? I don't know. I haven't got any songs I can play. What's this? I'm curious. Mm, I've pressed that button before. Feels like I'm playing Zelda. Forgot about that one. Zelda, great game, by the way. Our fan, good morning to you. Joining as a member, nice to see you. Skulls. Yes, big up that. Man, do you think that Ten Hag would be the perfect choice and feral player? <laughs> That's, a, that's an interesting news name. So I'm saying. Up the Reds, love Ten Hag. Hope he's learning English. No to Poch. I reckon he already knows English. I reckon he already knows English. Oh, I actually already did sing a song. Well, there you go. Who knew? Uh, Mike Byrne, what are you saying? Sam, who buys the players at Ajax? Is it Edwin? I imagine it's Edwin. I imagine it's over Mars. They're the two main chiefs. They've also got a, a, a lady. I can't remember her name, but she's a sort of head of finance over there. But they're such an excellently run club. And I would say, if you rewind three, four months, I would say that uh, it was it was an imp 
probably a properly impossible plan. The idea of Ten Hag coming to Manchester United, the idea of Edwin van der Sar coming to Manchester United, it was way outside the realms of possibility. But now things have changed. And I'll tell you what, let's have a look at this, right? This is something that for me, I'm going to say it again. Sorry, ladies and gents. If the moons are aligning, look at this. This falls perfectly. You want you want to find something that can bridge the gap between Manchester United and Ajax between now and the end of the season? Step forward, Dean Henderson. This is coming from James Ducker in the Telegraph, saying that Manchester United's goalkeeper, Dean Henderson, is wanted on loan by Ajax. Ajax chief and former United goalkeeper, Van der Sar, is a fan of Henderson. We scroll down here from the article from James Ducker. Ajax are interested in signing Henderson on loan next month with the United goalkeeper reluctant to spend the second half of the season on the bench. Is expected to start tonight, but it's only going to be his second appearance of the season and first for 11 weeks. We scroll down here and we read, why would Ajax want him? It remains to be seen if Ragnick is prepared to loan Henderson in mid-season and entrust Heaton as De Gea's understudy. But Van der Sar is an admirer. Now, if you look at what's going on with Ajax's goalkeeping situation, uh, Onana, who was banned for doping, he's only just come back in, but he's out of contract in the summer, could leave in January. He's not yeah, He's not won his place back despite Martin Stecklenburg being ruled out of the season with a hip injury. So these, they're using their third choice goalkeeper. So how, how amazing is that as an idea, right? Dean Henderson going out on loan between now and the summer, spending the rest of the season playing Champions League top, top level football in a progressive footballing side under Ten Hag. Win, win, win. win. That is a pure win-win situation for Manchester United, right? Because look, yeah, what was the point of signing Tom Heaton if we were going to do nothing with Dean Henderson, right? You signed Tom Heaton because maybe you knew something was going to happen. You signed another, a new third choice keeper because you, you thought maybe there's going to be something going on with our second choice. But if Van der Sar wants him, it's a perfect way for Manchester United to open that dialogue. Because let's be honest, after what we've done with Donny van der Beek, the last dialogue that we had with, with, with Ajax, we've taken a right steaming shit on the chest of it. That's what we did. Remember that letter that van der Sar said, sent to Manchester United fans after we signed Donny van der Beek? Treat him well. Let me see if I pull that one up, actually. Van der Sar, letter, van der Beek. Let's have a look. See if we can find it on Twitter. Dear Manchester United fans, please don't be pricks. Yours sincerely, Edwin van der Beek. He didn't say that. Um, right, there we go, let's put it up here. Remember this. Dear Manchester United fans, I hope you're doing well. It seems our, pra- our paths have crossed again. One of ours is joining you this season. And like many before him, he's been with us since a little boy. This bit here at the end. Please take good care of our Donny and help him dream. I mean, we could not... <laughs> we... Edwin, uh, Edwin uh, I just want to apologise on behalf of Manchester United Football Club for what has happened with Donny van der Beek, all right? We kind of thought that Paul Pogba was going to leave, so we kind of thought that Donny van der Beek could step in. But, you know, Pogba hasn't left because, you know, coronavirus happened and all that. But, hey, forget about it. It's in the past. Don't worry about it. There was a comment there from... Who's just joined? Uh, uh, our fan, there's a comment from you up there. Let me see if I can get it. Good morning, Sam. Here you go. That's what I always try and do, by the way, for members, ladies and gents. I always try and read your comments out as a priority. You remember, you supported the channel. I want to support your comments. Good morning, Sam. One question. If the dream somehow will come true, what do you think Ten Hag would bring to United and also needed for the team? Good question there. Uh, I would say that a lot of what Ten Hag needs is at Manchester United right now. Uh, and I think we're going to see that over the next couple of months with what Ragnik does to this squad, that does to this team. In terms of what he doesn't have, maybe, maybe that changes as well because of Ragnik. He doesn't have the support network at Manchester United in the same way that he does have that at Ajax. At Ajax, it's like the perfect situation. Like the bed's made perfectly, all fresh cart, fre- freshly, everything's fresh, crisp, and he can just focus on the football. Manchester United, we know we're like a washing machine. It's all over the place. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. Now, Randick hopefully will clean that up too, so that when Ten Hag comes in, he has someone above him that he can say, right, I've got these problems. Can you sort them? And Randick will be like, yeah, of course, I can sort them. So that hopefully that will be something good that happens. Let me go down here. Um, Man United since 82. Randick is known to put people he knows in as managers. I don't think Poch or Ten Hag will be in their thoughts. I'd be very, very surprised, my friend, if uh, neither of those are in his thoughts coming towards the end of the season. But let's be completely honest. 
The only person in Radnick's thoughts is probably Radnick. And it, well, what, it would be, if I was Radnick, I would be the only person in my thoughts. I'd be like, yeah, you gave me a six month contract. No, I'm liking this. Yeah, I'm, I've got, got Ronaldo, I've got Sancho managing the biggest club I've ever managed. Yeah, I want, I want a bigger slice of this pie. So Randick will, his first, his priority will be on keeping the job himself. And if he nails it and we still progress as a football club and I can see the development happening, I'm not going to be completely averse to that at all. And maybe it's just that Ten Hag will come a year that, is this, I'm not sure if it's, when does this contract run out? Is it in the summer or is it next summer? Ten Hag profile. So you see when his contract expires. So his contract runs until, there you go. Well, there you go. Maybe, maybe he can just get another year. Because if we're looking at Ten Hag's contract over here on Transfer Markt, his contract there, it runs until June 2023. So it's actually the end of next season where Ten Hag's contract runs out rather than this year. So maybe, maybe we're looking at, um, we're looking at Ragnick here. He's going to be here until not this summer, but the summer after. Ragnick's going to stay in for one more year and then it's going to be Ten Hag. And then the year after that, it's going to be Van der Sar. Mate, I can't, it's, it's just, I love the idea that there's a long-term plan. Of course, there's a long-term plan in my head. It's not necessarily Manchester United's long-term plan, but you can see it. You can see it right there in front of yourself. It'd be great. Dean Henderson uh, would want Ajax too. Uh, mate, Dean Henderson would love to go to Ajax. He, and people are saying, oh, Sam, keep uh, keep uh, Henderson at the club. He's a good second choice. A second choice goalkeeper, barring an injury, touch wood, touch wood, to De Gea, is going to play like a cup game. He's going to play hard at... Goalkeeper, a goalkeeper is not a position that you, um, it's not, it's not a position that you mess about in. Remember when we had, was it Anders Lindegaard and De Gea? And Fergie went through a period of like switching them every bloody game. And it really got on my nerves. Really got on my nerves. I remember that. I mean, both of them were good. We were keeping clean sheets. But I was like, why do you keep changing the goalkeeper? I know you've got to try and keep two happy. But if you've got two goalkeepers of the quality of De Gea, De Gea and the quality and the ambition of Dean Henderson. It's basically impossible to keep both happy at the same time, right? Um, so I love the idea of Dean going to Ajax, being their first choice goalkeeper in the knockouts of the Champions League, in a title pushing season in the Eredivisie. It would take him forwards and upwards in a team which is very progressive, play with the ball at their feet. He'll learn a different, it's not that he'll learn a different style. He kind of played semi like that at Sheffield, did he? he the modern day goalkeeper has to be good at football. Back in the day, it was all about shot stopping, being powerful, dominating your box. Modern day footballers, as goalkeepers, are more like sweepers. They've got a. Remember, when, was it against Crystal Palace or is it Arsenal? Where De Gea literally came like 15 yards out of his box and I literally had to rub my eyes. I was like, what? What have I just seen? I don't. You don't see De Gea leaving his area like that. But because uh, teams play with a higher line, the goalkeeper has to play with a higher line. And De Gea is not naturally good at that, not by comparison. But Dean Henderson, hey. I like that idea. I really like that. Not only because it gives us, as I said, the dialogue box being opened with um, with Ajax, but it just makes sense. But look, let me know in the comments here. Um, what do you think about it? Do you, what do you think about this idea of the Ten Hag Van Assar dream? Am I literally just dreaming, or have I convinced you here by looking? As I said, we looked at quotes from Van Assar directly. Quotes from Ten Hag directly. It's coming from the horse's mouth. I'm not making this up. I'm just bringing you the news. I'm excited, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Let's go down here and see what you're saying in the comments. Uh, and you're saying, Sam, I'm curious as what has precipitated this complete sea change in behaviour from the Glazers. Have they finally woken up to reality or is it the threat of losing sponsors? Now, I don't know that. But it's a very curious question, really, Ant. Because if you think about it, what Manchester United have done, as I said, with Ralph Radnick, with what is happening, um, it's not Manchester United. We've all been taught how to be a United fan for the last few years. Be pessimistic, expect the worst, and then the uh, likely thing is your expectations will get matched. But if something else happens, you'll be like, oh, oh, that's a nice pleasant surprise. That's just how Manchester United have been run as a football club for so long. So these changes, in reality, it's something that we've all known, we've all argued, right? It, if the Glazers truly wanted to make a shit ton of money, they want Manchester United to be successful. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not rocket science, is it? You want your asset, if you want to call it an asset, Manchester United as an asset, you want us to do so much more. Therefore, maybe the, the uh, just 
maybe just the desires of Manchester United to be successful and the desires for the Glazers to make money, they now align maybe a little bit more. I don't know. It's an interesting one to actually think about, though. Um, let's go up here, see what we're all saying in the comments. Uh, looking forward to tonight, says Joda. Hey, man, yeah, we're going to be speaking about team news next. We're going to be speaking about more team news coming from Ralph Randnick and not just about Donny van der Beek and Dean Henderson. I'm going to be looking at my predicted 11 and having a big old conversation here. Uh, Victor, I'm saying, Sam, you are dreaming, but we're all fans. The dream is on. I won't believe it until I see it with United, though, as is always the case, Victor. But, yeah, it... <coughs> sorry. It feels a bit closer today than it did the day before. As I said, hearing these quotes from Ten Hag himself. Uh, but, 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 but. This didn't, remember, this was a few days ago. This, this didn't happen yesterday, but it's him saying, I believe I'm hungry. I believe I'm ready, sorry. I would gladly accept that challenge, but not that I'm hunting for it. If that step doesn't arrive, I won't say my career has failed, but I believe I have enough skills to accept the challenge. If we go over here to what Edwin van der Sar says, he said, Look, I'm enjoying myself very much at Ajax. I still have two years left here. I want to keep achieving things here with the club, but I am sure the moment will arrive one day. Just rearrange that quote. So van der Sar there, or as he looks here, a mad, it looks like he's about to paint a watercolor painting of a canal boat. That's 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 the that's the that's the vibe I'm getting from Van der Sar there. He's just had a brownie. It's just started to kick in. He's like, I've got to go and paint. I've got to go and paint. I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Yeah, look, fair. I'm I'm getting excited, but look, hey, let's get excited about Manchester United again, right? Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Like, nothing wrong with that, Alex. Just like you're saying there, my friend. Being positive feels a bit odd after all the doom and gloom, eh? Shit me, it does. I hated those last couple of months under Solskjaer because it was just, I had to come on here and present and speak and talk. And yeah, just, just reached that point where I was like, my God, man, it's like, it's hurting. It's hurting to do this. Um, let's go down here and see what you're saying in the comments. Uh, it looks like he hasn't slept or showered in a month. Hell, he's just saving the world. He's just saving the war, saving the world. Uh, debunk saying, Sam, calm down. Football changes as fast as the stock market. Uh, you're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong there. Uh, but hell doesn't stop me getting excited about it. And as Alex King just said right there, look, it's finally good to be positive about Manchester United, man. Just enjoy it. Ride the wave. You know, we've we've been we've been swimming upstream for so long. Solskjaer was a rocky road, man. We had peaks, but we had troughs. And ultimately, the, the, the last trough was just too bit too big. And it swallowed everything up. And we're now in a position where we've got a manager in charge. We're like, Christ, he actually plays the football we want to see. We're keeping clean sheets at Old Trafford. We're controlling games. Shit, I haven't seen that in years. Now we're actually speaking about what's coming next and thinking Manchester United might actually be making the right decisions. That's exciting. So, that, hell yeah, I'm getting excited. We're talking about it. Right, what we're going to be doing now, now is we're going to be moving on to more team news for tonight because we play football tonight. Young boys in the Champions League. We're going to be speaking about the youngsters that have been added to the Champions League B squad. We're going to be talking about Ralph Ragnick explaining which players are going to be starting, not just Donny van der Beek and Dean Henderson. There's another player who's definitely starting. I'm going to run through my predicted 11. Woo! Before I do, ladies and gents, enter the draw, peeps. John Ewan, you've still not turned up, my friend. John Ewan, you won this last week. Congratulations to you. You've now got 48 hours to claim your prize, or it's going to be a lotto rollover. And two of these are going to get given away on Friday. Two a member on United People's TV, either on Facebook or on YouTube. If you want to be in with a chance of winning, just hit that join button. So it literally is only a couple of quid a month and it's your way of supporting the channel. It's your way of entering a prize to win one of those every single week. As I said, there's going to be more giveaways. I'm going to be doing more giveaways, probably announcing them maybe a week or so before Christmas, roughly, in the build-up to the last week of Christmas. It's going to get very, very festive on here. Going to have to get some like fake snow on. I'm not going to get any fake snow. I hate fake snow. It's bloody annoying. Um, but look, John, that's your shirt. Make sure you comment and, you well, you get in touch. It's the annoying thing. On Facebook, I can message people directly who win. On here, YouTube doesn't let me have any contact details of anybody. So the only thing I can do is say, look, you've got to come to me. Oh, look, it's a nice comment for once. Look at that. Sometimes you get nice comments. Ines, you're bloody good at your job. Oh, I'm, I'm, good, at, I'm good at blagging and, and chatting shit. So, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Or you've just admitted to murder here live on the stream. So I'm going to have to give your contact details to the police. Uh, Craig Williams, I really want to be that lucky winner soon. Fingers crossed for you, Craig, that he is. And Ifos is saying, how do you get how to get the giveaway? Uh, Ifos, if you look on Facebook, there's a little support now button. Just click that. Go through. As I said, it's only a couple of quid a month. Um, but yeah, let's speak now. 
about tonight. Uh, I found you really want to see Ahmad tonight. Will we see Ahmad? Let me know in the comments whether you think we're going to see Ahmad. You type yes or no in the comments, and I'll bring those up on screen. But look, let's see the players who have been added to the B score. We've got Bjorn Hardley, Charlie Wellen, Zidane, Iqbal, Charlie Sandwich, Sam Mather, and Shadow Shoratire have all been added to the B list. Now, does that mean they're going to play? No, absolutely not. Does that mean that uh, they could be involved tonight? Absolutely, yes. The B list is, a, a, I believe, if I'm off the top of my head, it's a list which means that any under-21s homegrown player can be added to the Champions League throughout the season. The A list is something that can't be changed, I don't believe. So you have to register the A list before the group stage and also register the A list before the knockouts. But you can add... And take people away. So I think Rashford's on the B list. I think Greenwood will, will be on the B list. So all of those being there. Sure, sure, Atira, we've already seen. Charlie Savage, Zenanik Bow, plenty of good stuff being said about him. Charlie Wellens as well. I'm not sure about Bjorn Hardley. But look, those youngsters are going to be in and around the squad tonight. But if we're looking at what Ralphie has said himself, there's more news that we can speak about. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak about uh, Sasha Lense and Ch Chris Armas in a minute. But let's scroll down here to see what he said about the actual team news for tonight. Because there's more team news. Here we go. So at the weekend, young Anthony Langer came off the bench. Ahmad's involved in training. Are you keen to look at some of the younger players as well? This is what he said. He said, yes, both the younger players to give them game time. The same with Mason Greenwood, who hasn't played that much in the couple, last couple of weeks. So he will definitely play. So Mason Greenwood, by the sound of things, is definitely going to start. He was in my predicted 11. Go on, Sam. Go on, Sam. Three out of three. Um, but also a few of the experienced ones who didn't get that much game time in the past. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Hopefully even Luke Shaw will be available for the game. Nemanja Matic will be the captain tomorrow. We'll speak about that. That means Harry Maguire's not playing. Wan Mata will get game time. Jesse Lingard. So we have quite a few players who, we, who will be playing tomorrow and who definitely and desperately, desperately need game time. So there's going to be mega rotations here tonight. Mega, mega rotations. And... The thing I'm most looking forward to about these rotations is I want to see a hey, the buzzwords coming continuity between how we played against Crystal Palace to how we play tonight, right? Because you can you can make so many you can make so many changes in a team, but what's the point in making all these changes in a team if the team completely plays a different style of football? It's what we did all the time under Solskjaer. That's why he re, that's why he relied on our starting eleven so much because once you take that starting eleven away. We play completely differently. Josh, you're saying Maguire being dropped. Thank fuck for that. Hey, look, Maguire is being dropped. So my starting 11 that I predicted is not actually going to be right. And you're thinking we might see Shoratire if we're winning comfortably by half time. We might see Diallo and Zidane. I don't think it's going to be crazy, crazy amount of youngsters tonight. I think we'll probably see. And, and that, that's that's wrong to do as well. To, to have a, a youngster use a game in a successful fashion, you have to match experience with youth. You know, that's why the class of 92 was able to be successful because they came through with a team that still had like Cantona in there, had Keane in there. If those players weren't there, uh, then the class of 92 wouldn't have been a, a, as talented as they were. They needed the, the stewards and the and, like, the captains on the pitch, to the, the leaders to sort of show them what to do. Uh, Jai, you sent a super sticker. What's that? I don't know what a super sticker is. Thank you very much. Uh, Maguire's out tonight. He is out tonight. But now, look, this was my predicted eleven. If you watch my, what do you mean if you've watched that video? Of course, you watch my predicted 11 video. If you haven't, you have to leave the stream right now and go and watch it. This was my predicted 11 for the game. I went for a back five of Henderson, Wambasaka Shaw, Maguire, and Bai. A midfield two of McTominay and Matic. Two attacking midfielders of Van der Beek and Lingard, and a front two of Greenwood and Elanga. I'll tell you what, I'm still feeling pretty confident about my team choice here. I'm going to switch that. That was, that was one mistake I made. I'm allowed one mistake, right? Everyone's allowed a mistake. Nothing wrong with making mistakes in life. Uh, but look, Maguire's not starting tonight. What's your reaction to that? You let me know in the comments, eh? What do you think about Maguire not starting? I know for a lot of people, that's like... Uh, like, I know a lot of people, a lot of you don't like Maguire in any way, shape or form. I do think Maguire gets a little bit over-criticised by comparison of other players. But I also think, as a captain, you deserve the extra criticism. But look, I think that... I, I would love that. I would love that as a starting eleven. As question marks... Uh, in my opinion, about you know what's the kind of what's the point ish in giving this bloke game time? He doesn't want to sign a contract. He's holding the not holding the club to ransom, but he's just like, is that, I, 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 look, cool. 
So why use him? Uh, who would you use there instead? Uh, you probably could just go, right, okay. Well, if Lingard's not going to be playing, I mean, that midfield too doesn't really... that Those two attacking midfielders wouldn't really fill me with that much hope, if I'm being completely honest. Ahmad there and Van der Beek. I know it might be cool, right? I know it might be nice. But that doesn't strike me as two attacking midfielders who are going to have incredible work rate off the ball. Uh, I think that's something that Ahmad will learn in his game, but that's certainly not a natural part of his game. He's good with the ball at his feet, right? So that's something that Lingard, and I, I understand why Lingard would be used there, because he would apply that far, far more than Ahmed would. So that, I'm, I'm sticking with Matt starting 11. I, I, st I think that starting 11 is correct. Greenwood, he'll be, he'll be starting up front by the sounds of it. Do you think Elanga will start? Type yes or no in the comments, eh? Let me see what you think. Let me go down back here and see what you're saying about Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire needs to fight for his place, says David. You're spot on, mate. Everybody needs to fight for his place. Uh, he's not captain material, says Mark. Uh, and saying, can Maguire be dropped off the White Cliffs of Dover? Well, if you want to join uh, or in the kidnapping or murdering gang, then yes, you can go and do that. And that's not actually a gang. There's no gang here on the United People's TV. Although there might be in the mods. I can't really rule that out. Um, oh, heart. No, Maguire. Good morning to you, Salim, my friend. We won't miss him, says David. Uh, Sam, man, love your streams. Very informative. Keep it up. Thank you, buddy. Informative is, is one of my buzzwords as well. If continuity is one of the buzzwords, informative is one of the buzzwords. It's what I always want to do. It's not about me shouting my opinion and forcing my opinion down your throats. It's about speaking about all the facts in front of us and then having an actual discussion about it. That's what I like to do anyway. I should coach Manchester United. No, I don't want to see us get relegated. That would be a terrible idea. Um, Ilanga will start for sure. Uh, Paul, you think he will start as well? He looks very, very good. Hey, Ilanga, do you remember this? Let me, let me pull this photo up. One sec. Do you remember when Ilanga was in the preseason? And he looked like a bloody Terminator. I remember this. I don't know why. I don't know why it just popped into my head. But this was the start. This was going into the preseason that we, yeah, we had a preseason, didn't we? Yeah, it was a season. Uh, and he looked like this. Anthony Langer used the off season to turn himself into a bloody Terminator. And I was like, okay, yeah, well, that's that is the mentality of uh, a young athlete who wants to make the most of the opportunities that are coming in front of him. And Anthony Langer was probably one of our most exciting, if not actually our most exciting, because we had so many players off because of the Euros, I think. And Elanga came in, scored a couple of goals, looked absolutely tidy. He looked very, very good. And as I said, that's clearly a, a youngster who um, has taken the, can see the opportunity coming in front of him. And it's, it was it success is when opportunity meets preparation. There's your preparation. Tonight might, might be the opportunity. He's absolutely shredded. Woo! But yeah, Elanga clearly is a, is, a, is a youngster who backs himself. And that's very, very important. And I'm looking forward. I think he'll start tonight. I put him there alongside Mason Greenwood. And he can play that. Um, he can play that um, pressing style. And that, that that front four. Yeah, cool. I think there's there's question marks about whether Van der Beek can play in it. Uh, but I don't think there really should be. He, this this is a, basically the exact... Um, System he you was used to playing under Ten Hag Ajax, right? I mean, there's a couple of lies coming in the comments here, such as this one from Orr saying, bloody hell, that's what I see in the mirror. You need to get a new mirror because your mirror is cracked. Your mirror is broken, my friend. Uh, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Elanga tonight. That'll, that'll be good. That'll be exciting. He's worked hard. Yeah, he absolutely has worked hard. And Richard doesn't like it, though. So he's going to dislike the video. That's a bit rude. Just because you haven't got a 12-pack, Richard, doesn't mean you can dislike the video, right? Don't take it out on Elanga. Just stop eating all the mince pies. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You might be shredded, but maybe not. Anyway, so that's the team for tonight. That's the team news for tonight. We know that Greenwood's going to start. We know that uh, Van der Beek's going to start. We know that Henderson's going to start. And that's why I've, I back, I think Matic is going to come in in midfield as captain. I think he's going to partner him with, with Matomane. Might be wrong. You might see Van der Beek playing there alongside him in a double pivot. And therefore, you might see who else can go up there. Sancho could start. Hell, I don't know. doesn't really matter. I'm just excited that Manchester United tonight will rotate, will rotate properly. Maybe we'll see why Mata start there. But if we're looking at one player inside this entire club who cannot play the pressing system, step four, why Mata? That is not why Mata's game. He will be puffing. He'll be on his ass in like 20 minutes if he starts that game. So I think it'll be Mata coming on for the last 20 minutes, half an hour. When we sort of switch up the tempo a little bit, we wait for the tired legs of young boys to come out. And that's when someone like Juan Mata and his qualities can take advantage of. Not in the first 20 minutes. So I'd be very, very surprised. 
if one matter started this game. But look, uh, GOI, you're saying Avan needs game time. Yeah, look, he will get game time. I don't know whether he'll start tonight, but we'll definitely see Avan in. Remember that goal? Who was it against? Milan? I think it was against Milan. That headed goal he scored. Was it Bruno dinked it through and Ahmed? Like that? It's a great goal, that was. But look, we need to speak about the Champions League, of course, because there's possible opponents now. In the, I don't think, uh, because there's another round of games tonight, I don't think these are all the teams. But so far, these are the possible opponents for Manchester United in the Champions League. We've got PSG, Juve, Atletico, Sporting and Inter Milan. Um, out of those five, who do you, who would you want? You let me know in the comments. I'll read, I'll read some of your comments out. And don't just put who you want, but, but why do you want them as well? Uh, Matt, you're asking why not Matter? Matter will not play this uh, this pressing system, my friend. Matter suits a team that controls possession, enjoys patient build up. Yeah, he's not. He's not going to be not at this age. It's not going to be a player that um yeah that suits this intense pressing style up front. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. But look, let me go down here and see what team you, out of those five there, PSG, Juve, Atletico, Sporting and Inter. Some tough draws there. Really, really tough draws. Who do you want? Let's have a look. Uh, Push Benny, you want PSG. Uh, you would rather have Lisbon, says Feral Pleasures. Uh, PSG says Peter. Manor, you said it will believe it will be Sporting or Inter. Lisbon or Atletico. I'll take Sporting, thanks, says Dads. Sporting, says Kratos. PSG, please not PSG. PSG, I want PSG. Uh, look, it's not it's not the matter is lazy, but matter's not that style of football, right? Uh, look, uh, I'll tell you what, this is a great comment. Sam, buddy, how did it feel to hear a man United press conference with such in-depth technical and logical explanations? <laughs> That's what it felt like. I'm not sure if it was just me, right? But I genuinely watched that whole press conference and I can't remember the last time I watched a whole press conference at Manchester United. You normally get a bit bored after they said the team news. I was just, I was just interested to hear what he had to say. He's a very, as I said, he's a person I can genuinely listen to. But out of those five, it's not even close who I want. There is only one team I want out of that, and that's PSG. Anybody who doesn't want to see Ronaldo Messi playing for PSG and United at this time, United against Poch, Ramnick against Poch, if you don't want to see that, Come on, people. Who are you kidding? PSG, anyway. We, we, PSG is our playing ground, man. Pump them a couple of times on two. Sure, minor. Doesn't matter if you've got Mbappe or Neymar. It's minor. We're going to win there anyway. Look, we, we never get the hardest draw, so it's probably going to be PSG. Actually, who is the hardest draw out of that? Probably Atletico Madrid, I would say, is the hardest draw out of that. PSG on their day can be incredible, but Atletico Madrid, as you saw yesterday, they were like dominated for like so much of the game and they won 3-0. They're so well drilled, it'll be very, very hard. PSG, hey, I easily want PSG. It's not even close. I want to see PSG. I want to see Messi getting schooled by Ronaldo. I want to see Ronaldo taking another team to the Champions League quarterfinals. I want to see Messi crying in an ideal situation. You know, I'm not asking for him to get injured, but I, I kind of want to see Messi cry. I want to see Mbappe getting patted by Rashford again. I want to see Ronaldo doing the Sioux. Not that I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say, I want to see him celebrate. Look, that's what I want to see, right? And I want to see Poch cry too. Ideally, Poch and Messi crying together. That's kind of an ideal situation. But, you know, I'm not fussy. I'm not fussy. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think that is all of the ties because there's another round of Champions League games tonight. So I think there's more second choice teams there. But you better be joining me on Monday, right? Because it's the Champions League draw live. And I'm going to be here on United People's TV. And you're going to be here joining me. And we're going to watch it. Together, I'm not going to watch it again this time because I got <laughs> the video. I knew it would anyway, but I did it because I'm an idiot. Uh, I got taken down for copyright, so I will probably just what I'll do a watch along with it. But you can't spoil it for me in the comments. But look, I want PSG. I I don't care. Look, you've always got to face. You've got to beat the best teams in Europe if you want to win the competition. And remember as well that we're not playing this game until February. We could be a massively different team by February than we are right now. And maybe it's going to be a case of, um, as I said, the way we played against Crystal Palace. If that's after one game, imagine what we could do after a couple of months. Uh, push Pen is saying, let's do a watch along. I will do a watch along. As I said, I don't ever, I will never ever in a million years ever. Uh, I'm sure loads of, you would, loads of you would enjoy it, but I wouldn't. So I wouldn't do it. 
I don't ever want to be sat in front of a camera watching a game of football. It's not my style. I know there are... Uh, look, you can go and watch who You know who you can go and watch. You can go and watch whoever you want to do it. You won't find me doing that here on United People's TV. I've got my own style. They've got theirs. Everybody does it how they want to do it. Uh, when is the Champions League draw, says Ulamide. That's on Monday, my friend, the 13th of December. I believe it's at like 12 p.m. UK time, roughly. I don't know the actual exact draw yet, but I'll be here. We're going to have facts and figures about every single team that we can draw. I'll make it as interactive as possible. Craig Williams, what do I think about the FA Cup draw? We always get a tough, well, I say a tough draw. We always get a Premier League draw and Man City always draw, I don't know, League Two or non-league opponents. It just happens every single time. It is what it is. But look, let's wrap this one up for today because I've got another video that I need. I want to get to you, ideally by lunchtime. I'm going to do a video about Chris Armas and a video about Sasha Lense. Who are they? Manchester United's new assistant manager and Manchester United's sports psychologist. Who are they? Why are they important? What are they going to do at Manchester United? That is what I will be doing in a video to bring to you this afternoon before the game tonight. And then tonight we're here as well tonight. Woo! It's, it's going to be busy. Or oh, saying, uh, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Saying you should do a live a love stream. A love stream or a live stream? A love stream is a very, very different thing. <laughs> and I'm not sure that would go down very well on YouTube. Maybe on new porn, but not on YouTube. I don't know what new porn is. A, a friend told me it's a website. I've never heard of it before. I'm not sure who it is. Um, hi, Sam. Can you please bring one of our own players to United People's TV for an interview? I'm going to be working on that soon. Don't worry about that. But look, I'm definitely going to be doing a live stream for the Champions League draw on Monday. So don't worry. I hope you join me for that. Make sure you join me later. The arms might be open. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still considering taking the arms behind closed doors for members only and making it a bit of a bit more of an informal show. I'm not really I've been completely honest. I'm not I'm not enjoying the the formality of the of the pre-match conversation. I think I've kind of want it in a pub environment. So I'm I'm still a bit I'm in an hour in about it. I might do it today because I don't want to let you down. But I'll be here for the post-match reaction. I'll tell you what, I'm dead excited. And that's that's what playing youngsters makes you do, right? Playing youngsters makes you excited for the game. Even even if they're dead rubber games, as long as you're playing youngsters and giving them opportunities as United fans will watch it and go yeah, man, I've enjoyed it. But look, I hope you've enjoyed the love stream this morning. I'll be here tomorrow morning with another love stream. I'm here Monday to Friday with love streams at 9.30 a.m. So you better subscribe. But look, I'll be here later on. Make sure you check out the videos going out at lunchtime about Chris Armas and Sasha Lense. That was a really good stream this morning. The Ten Hag and the Van der Sar dream. It's John, yes? That's my Dutch accent. That was a terrible accent. I'm going to go now. Just pretend it never happened.